हेलो एवरीवन होप यू आर डूइंग वेल वेलकम टू माय चैनल कोड न्यू एंड टॉक टुडे इन दिस वीडियो आई विल बी डिस्कसिंग ए वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एस्पेक्ट फ्रॉम द इंटरव्यू लाइक वेर एवर यू अटेंड एनी इंटरव्यू यू विल डेफिनेटली फेस सम आउटपुट बेस्ड क्वेश्चन सो इन दिस वीडियो आई विल बी डिस्कसिंग टॉप टेन आउटपुट बेस्ड क्वेश्चन विच आर आस्ड ऑलरेडी इन द इंटरव्यूज सो विल डिस्कस one by one so let's get started with the first questions so question number 1 is related to string so here you see i have taken string a b and c and then we are comparing these string with equal to double equal to and equal methods and what will be the output for this so output is also written on my string you can see like the first output will be true false and true so but how it is coming true false and true that's very important that you will only be able to answer when you have a concept about strings like how the string works so first two string which is a and b are string literals and c is a created with the help of new keyword so it is object but when you when we compare like a equal to equal to b it is returning true and a equal to equal to c it is returning false although the value is same but the way the string works internally is different because uh, when we created a string with a and b th those two string were stored in a string constant pool and when we created a string with the new keywords that was stored in a heap memory of the uh, jvm so reference is different so when we compare with double equal to right it checks the references so for the first two the references is same so it is returning true but in second case it is different so it is returning false but when we compare with the equal method it checks for the value so the value of a and c is same so it is returning true so this concept you need to be very aware about a string then only you will be able to answer these questions so when anybody ask these questions many people fail to answer because they don't know the concept of the string how internally works so in order to answer this question you need to be very clear about the string concepts so i hope that you got how the output is true false and true so now i'll move to the next questions so the next question is related to static block and you see here you have taken it to statement one which is in the static block and other is in the main methods but the order of execution which statement will execute first we know like uh, main method is the entry point of a program in java but before main method this uh, static block execution happens so the order of execution here is the first static block will be printed and then main method will be printed so you should be knowing about Uh, the concept of a static block then only you will be able to answer these questions next question is related to again like this is pre and post increment operator like here you see in the main method there is a variable called a and the value is 5 and then we are printing a value so what will be the output after this execution so the output will be 12 how the 12 will be there let's discuss here i'll be telling you like how the value of 12 came as a out output so you see the initial value of a is 5 and then in the println statement what we are doing we are incrementing a and then doing addition then again incrementing a value so first the value of a is 5 so the value will be 5 and then since we have a post increment the value will become 6 so the in the first a the value will be 5 then addition now value became 6 because it was a post incremented and then we have a pre increment so earlier value is 6 since it is pre increment again the value will be in increased by 1 so now it will become 
so final answer will be 5 plus 7 so it will be 12 so this is how the output will be 12 i hope that you got it and if you don't get it uh, please let me know in the comment section i will try to clarify your doubt question number four is related to method overriding uh, again this is very important when you have a concept of overriding then only you will be able to answer this question and i have seen that uh, this question has been asked in many interviews so you have to be very clear about the method of a writing concept so here you see we have a class a which has a method so and then we have a class b which extends class a which also has a method so and it is overriding that method and then in the main method we are creating an object of a b but reference is of class a and when we call this object dot so method it will call which so method it will call which so method like so method from class a or so method class b so definitely it will call the so method from class b because that's the reason you that's the reason you see the output uh, is b which is printed because it is calling the method so from class b so here you see when we are creating an object right we are creating an object of class b so in runtime it will decide right uh, the object of class b will be created so when we are called this object is of class b so when we call this so method the method which are in class b will be called next question number five is again related to the overriding concept so here we have a class a where we have a variable x and we have a method so and then there is a class b which extend class a and we have again variable x and then we have very we have a method so now here again we are creating an object of uh, b class and then we are calling method of object dot so and then we are also printing object dot x so in the previous question we saw right uh, that when we call this object dot so the method which was called from the b so it will print a b and the value of x is 20 so the first output will be this b colon 20 but when we called this object dot x and this object is from uh, object is of class b and the value of x in class b is 20 but it is printing 10 why just we said right uh, object is of class b so it will call method of class b but when we printing that variable value it is printing 10 not 20 although the value is 20 in class b this is because the method is overridden but variable value is not overridden so the value which are printing which is x is not overridden it is actually a 10 so that's the reason uh, it is printing 10 so in the note you see i have already given a method is overridden but variable is hidden so not overridden so that's the reason it is not printing 20 it is printing 10 so this is very important concept many of us don't know uh, like uh, as we know like since method is overridden we also know like variable can also be overridden but this is not true only the method is overridden variable is not overridden so this is also a tricky question from the overriding you should be very clear in order to answer this type of questions next co is question number six uh, which is related to constructor chaining so here again you see we have a class a and class b which extends class a and then in the main method we are creating a object of class B so how the execution of constructor takes place so when we create a we know like whenever we create an object it will call the constructor of that class but since it is extending class A here the concept of constructor chaining will come into the picture so the order so order of execution is first it will call parent class constructor then it will call child class constructor 
so here you see first it is calling class a constructor and then it is calling class b constructor because uh, class b extends class a so this concept if you don't know this concept you will give the wrong answer because we know whenever we create a object it will create it will call constructor of that class so if, if you go with that scenario you should call b class constructor but it is calling a class constructor and then calling b class constructor because since it is extending class a it will call the parent class constructor first then it will call the child class constructor first so next question is again related to a static and instance block which is question number seven and so i think in few slides back where we discuss about the static block and here we have a static versus instance block so here again we see we have a static block then we have a instance block and then we have a uh, like class test where we have a class we are printing constructor and then we are creating a object of test class so how the execution of this statement will be printed in a console when we run this program so basically as we discussed right first that a static block will be executed and then instance block and then constructor so first it will print a static block then it will print instance block then it will print constructor because the order of execution happens whenever we call first static block will be executed then instance block will be executed and then the constructor will be executed so that's the reason you see in the output a static block is printed first instance block is printed and then constructor is, is printed so this is how the execution will happen so these are the like very basics java concept which everybody should be knowing if you don't know then it will be difficult to answer this type of questions next question number eight is related to a string uh, this question is also very often asked in the interview where you will be given overloaded method basically here you see in the class we have a m1 method which takes a string as a parameter and then it prints that string and then return that string then again we have a same m1 method but it is taking a object type as a parameter so basically m1 is a overloaded method and then it is taking object type parameters returning that object and then printing also so when we call this m1 method with null like which of the two method will be called that is the questions so here the m1 with string parameters will be called so here you see in the output it is printing a string null because null we are passing so null will be printed and it is it will print also a string null because in java right it gives preference to the string rather than object so if you don't know this preference concept you will be giving a wrong answer for this i have seen many times people have given answer like this uh, m1 with the object method will be called which is wrong uh, but it will m1 with a string uh, which is the method m1 which accept a string as a parameter will be called when we call with null value so you should be very clear like which method will be called when we call with null because it will give preference to the string not the object next question which is question number nine so here you see here also the two concept is involved which is continue and break so to answer this question you should be knowing like how continue work and what is the functionality of break if you don't know you will not be able to answer this question so here you see uh, there is a for loop which is running from 0 and which is running less than 5 and it is getting incremented one by one and if i is equal to equal to 2 it will continue and if i is equal to equal to 4 it should break so how the execution will happen so when like let me tell you first what is the functionality of continue so here we see that when i is equal to equal to 2 it is saying continue it means that it will skip that value and will not print it will go to the next value and when 
i equal to equal to 4 it is saying break so when we say break it will come out of the loop so that's the reason let's say if we what will be the output first when i is equal to 0 it will be printed i is equal to 1 it will be printed when i is equal to 2 since it is continue it will skip that value and it will go to the next value so now i'll i will be 3 so 3 will be printed when i will be 4 it is saying break so the break means it will come out of the loop so when we came out of the loop it will not print anything and loop will break so that's the reason the output is 0 1 3 because 2 was skipped and when the value is 4 it the loop broke so the final output is 0 1 3 and the last question which is question number 10 so here it in the concept involves this question is related to collection so sometimes people ask questions related to collection so that how well you know concept of collection in java so here you see we have a class person which has name and then this is constructor where we are assigning the name and then we have a equal methods we are overwriting that equal methods and then we have a hash code method that is returning one and now in the main method we have declared a set and then we are adding value like Alice Bob and Alice and then the question is what will be the size of the set so here if you don't know the functionality of the set you will answer this question wrong because we since we are adding three value to the set most of the people will say that the size of this set will be three but which is not correct the size of the set will be two because set says right we cannot add the duplicate value to it if it is duplicate it will not add that value so here you see first Alice is added then Bob is added and then again Alice is added which is a duplicate value so this Alice will be not added so only the set has the value is Alice and Bob like one so there the size of the set will be two because uh, it works on the hash code and equal method so here since we have overridden that equal method and hash code the Alice which are adding in the third it will be a duplicate to the first value where we already added Alice in the set so with this the size of the set will be 2 so I hope that these questions will help you video. thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video bye bye